Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the Packet Internet Groper, otherwise known as PING, P-I-N-G. We're going to start off by taking a look at the purpose of this utility, and then we'll move on to see how it actually works. And then finally, we'll use a few examples of this command and um, uh, see how it works in an actual lab setting. Okay, so first things first, what is it and why do we want to use it? Well, the ping utility is used to test basic connectivity to an endpoint. Okay, so on a high level, you can just say, broadly speaking, ping tests to see if a device is online. More specifically, ping tests the layer 3 functionality of a device. So what do I mean by that? Well, layer 3 is where you have your IP addressing. And layer 3 is the OSI model, layer 3, or the internet layer of the TCP IP model. So what we're really testing here is IP. And we're testing if the device's layer 3 uh, capabilities are functioning properly. And that's all we're testing. We're not testing anything more about this device. And we'll see in a minute some of the, the limitations of this command. Okay, so that's it. it. It's a utility, and we use to see if a device is online in terms of its layer 3 network capabilities. So with that said, let's actually look at a diagram to see how ping works specifically. Okay, here's our lab setup, and we have a router and a switch and two PCs. And for our purposes, we're going to focus on the router and PC1. And in a minute, we're actually going to log into Router1. But for now, let's take a look at what happens when we use the ping utility on the router and we use it to see if PC1 is online. So the first thing that's done after we issue the ping command on the router is a message is created and it's sent to PC1. This message is called the ICMP echo request. ICMP is a protocol, it stands for Internet Control Message Protocol, and it's something you come across quite often in networking. So as we go out, go on throughout this series, you're going to hear a lot about ICMP, um, but for now we're going to keep it simple and just look at it in terms of ping. And so this echo request is sent to PC1, and it pretty much says, hello, if you get this message, respond back to me. So it's asking it to kind of echo, to repeat this request. It's asking it to, to say hello, essentially. So if PC1 receives the message, and if PC1 is actually functioning properly, it will go ahead and create a reply message and send a message back to the router. The message it sends back is called the ICMP echo reply. And in a minute, we'll see some of the details and the information we can learn from that. But for now, let's realize what just happened. We use the IP address when we issue the ping command, and we talked about this being a layer 3 network utility. So we are confirming IP connectivity. And when we do that, we are necessarily confirming the functionality of the two layers be below IP or below layer 3. So we're actually testing layers 1, 2, and 3 of the OSI model when we use ping. So if we start at the bottom with the physical layer, we're certainly testing this link and this link and all the ports involved. On the data link layer, we're talking Ethernet and we're testing MAC addresses. Can we actually use Ethernet properly in order to get a frame from the router to the PC? And then finally, we're testing layer 3, and here we're testing IP. So does it have an IP address, and can it actually route properly back to us? Okay, so when we use ping, it's focused on layer 3, but just keep in mind, it means we're also testing layers 1 and 2 as well. Okay, so that's the, that's the basic protocol and how it functions. You send an ICMP echo request, and you get back an ICMP echo reply. So now let's actually jump onto the command line at the router and give this a try ourselves. Okay, so we're on the router now, and we're going to use ping to see if PC1 is online. So the command we want is ping, and after that we enter the IP address of PC1, which we know is 10.10.10.5. So let's hit enter, and we have our results right away. 
So let's take a look at some of this information we have here. Sending five 100 byte ICMP echoes to 10.10.10.5. So right off the bat, it's telling us how many echo requests it sent. Now in the previous diagram, we, we only looked at one message sent, one echo request, and one echo reply. Um, ping can be implemented in a couple different ways, and in fact, we have control over how many messages we want to send, but by default on Cisco routers, it's five, and they do that to give you a better understanding, I guess a better measure of the performance, um, because if you only send one packet, perhaps that packet can get dropped or filtered some way, somewhere along the network, whereas if you send five and one gets dropped, four still have a chance of getting through and coming back. So it's, it's a more uh, thorough testing, uh, pretty much. So we send five messages. It tells us the size of each message. We can control that as well. And if we look down here, we see that the, the success rate is 100%. And each one of those exclamation marks indicates that uh, a successful message was sent and received. Okay, so our success rate is 100%, 5 for 5. And then we also learn something else here, the round trip time. So when you send a message, the ping utility is going to measure how long it takes for our message once it's sent in order to get a reply back. Okay, so it's the, the measure of the transmission of the request to the reception of the reply from the host. And it gives us some interesting output. It, it calculates the, the lowest one, the average one, and the maximum time. MS stands for milliseconds, so you can see how quickly this is happening. Okay, so from this example, we can see that the router can successfully ping PC1, and it's happening pretty quickly. The average time was one millisecond. Well, let's take a look at ping if uh, we want to use some more functionality, if we want to customize it a little bit. So instead of entering the IP address, let's just hit enter after we type in ping. And then we're prompted. Do we want to use the IP protocol? Well, yes, we do, actually. So you, d you just hit enter to, to take the default. The default is listed in the brackets there. And now it's asking us for our target. So again, we enter PC1's IP. And then here we have our um, option to change how many messages we want to send. Perhaps five um, isn't enough. Perhaps we want to do 15. We'll hit enter. And then we can change the, the datagram size of the IP messages. So this can be useful if you're testing out um, maximum transition uh, transmission units on a link. Um, and we talk about that in some other tutorials. But essentially, it gets uh, to um, testing out um, bandwidth capabilities and also fragmentation. Um, those are some of the things you can kind of gauge with, uh, with the ping command. So for here, let's change it to 500 bytes. And we'll run through and just take the, for now, the, the rest of the defaults. And you can see here, our output has changed. So we sent 15 500 byte ICMP echo messages. You can see we have 15, uh, exclamation point, uh, uh exclamation marks there. Um, our success rate is 100%. And again, we have the round trip time measurements there as well. Okay, so we can customize ping a little bit on the router in order to get some more information and play around with it uh, to whatever end we're interested in. A couple notes about the ping command. Um, it's, it's a good kind of broad measure of performance, but it's oftentimes can be a little bit misleading. If you try to ping a device and it doesn't respond, um, the device may be up and functioning fine, but perhaps there's a problem between you and the device. So the packets never got there in the first place. So you can't just assume that the end device is having a problem. Um, so I guess if you come into problems with ping, if, if your endpoint doesn't respond or, or it only responds to half of the messages or if it takes a very long time to get the messages back, don't just immediately assume it's the end device. There could be everything between you and the end device to look into. Okay, so again, it's just a, a very high level measurement of functionality here. Also, if you're using the ping command and uh, but you're using it for a problem that doesn't apply, then um, you're, you're, you're going to frustrate the people you work with. And here's an example. If somebody says, you know, I think the mail server isn't functioning properly. Um, I can send mail, but I can't receive anything. And if you jump onto a router or a PC and, and you ping it and it pings just fine and you go back to them and say, well, I can ping it. I don't think there's a problem. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a high chance you'll get slapped. 
Why do I say that? Because it's not apples to apples here. Um, they're talking about a higher la- higher level problem, like an ap- application layer problem with mail, and yet you're just testing layers one through three. Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is be smart in how you use the ping command. Use it when you need to test what it can test. Okay, don't try to use it for something that it really has no insight into. Okay, and so that's the ping utility. Um, jump onto your router switches or PCs and play around with it. That's it. Thanks for watching.